in Philadelphia have chosen a progressive as their new district attorney. You want to be safe, you don't need this many jails. My guys don't trust you. What am I to tell them? I suggest you don't shoot unarmed people in the back. There's no mass incarceration. This will be controversial. The DA's office is not a place a social experiment should be conducted. You're being lied to. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Larry, good morning from Las Vegas. Thank you for joining me today. It's delightful to see you got some scary people standing behind you there. Yeah, but they're a great team, man. They're in a, one of my favorite new series on PBS you know, called Philly DA. <laughs> that it's my, my dream team. <laughs> well, Larry, you're a civil rights attorney, a career civil rights attorney, and I understand you sued the Philly Police Department over 75 times, overturned 800 convictions. So how does someone who's a career defense attorney uh, switch sides and become, you know, a Philly DA? Well, you know, I never really view them as opposite sides. The What the defense does all day long is try to figure out what the prosecution is going to do. And what the prosecution does all day long is try to figure out what the defense is going to do. So you're always sort of looking from a slightly different angle at the same thing. You know, I came out of law school and I applied to both prosecutor and defender offices because I wanted to do public service in criminal justice. Uh, and, and while I understand the system is adversarial, it's not supposed to be adversarial to the truth. So I didn't really find that transition to be difficult at all. You know, I, I had a lot of time in court. I had 30 years in court, four to five days a week in courtrooms, had 10,000 clients, thousands of trials. And when you have that kind of background, it's not hard for a prosecutor to become a defense attorney. It's not hard for a defense attorney to become a prosecutor. And you ran for the Philly DA office and won uh, with, the, with the slogan, start spending smart and stop spending stupid. Could you expand on that? Oh, I mean, um, I do have an affection for the word stupid, I, I must admit. Well, yeah, I can expand on it. You know, we are the land of freedom, and somehow we pay, became the most incarcerated country in the world. And at the time I ran, I'm driving around Philly, which is the poorest of the 10 largest cities. They have built a new courthouse. They have all kinds of prisons, but there are for sale signs hanging off the side of public schools, and I'm not making that up. They were literally selling public school buildings at the same time. They got all kinds of money to build courthouses. You want to prevent crime. You need good public education. You don't need more jails and you, you don't need more courthouses. You need good public education. You need all the kinds of things that are effective prevention. We get this in medicine. Unclear to me why we haven't got it, gotten it in criminal justice, but I think the people get it. And that's why 10% of the U.S. right now has elected a progressive prosecutor. Now, this is an eight part series that takes you inside the Phillies DA's office. What was off limits and what was acceptable? Because were there concerns about privacy and what was public domain? Uh, yes, we were actually very careful about that. Some of them were legal concerns. You can't, you can't allow people to see what's going on with a grand jury. Uh, you can't allow people to see certain things that are covered by privacy laws relating to juveniles, but some of it's just morality. You know, you also can't use victims and survivors of crimes for entertainment. So, uh, you know, unless they were, you know, excited about participating in some way, and I wasn't asking them, that didn't happen. You know, you, you have to have respect were the fundamental functions of the office we did. You have to make sure you compromise nothing. We did that. But there was no harm. And they're sitting in when we're discussing whether we should prosecute prostitutes or we should push people who are engaging in sex work towards a public health solution. There's really no problem in sitting in, in a, a conference room table when we're talking about whether we're going to prosecute mere possession of marijuana. That is appropriate. These are issues of significance to society. And we're glad that we were able to share those moments. You know, I'm a Las Vegas native, and I grew up across the street from Mayor Oscar Goodman, who's uh, one of our famous, not only famous mayor, but uh, from Philly. And I get such a vibe from this show about his attitude and his progressive agenda, too. So it must be a Philly thing. Well, Oscar Goodman, unless I'm mistaken, I didn't know the gentleman, but he was a criminal defense attorney in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, of a, of a prior era who became uh, the mayor of Las Vegas. Uh, Philly does have a special kind of attitude. There's no doubt about it. We have a, there's a gritty, rough and ready, uh, very egalitarian aspect to it. You know, this is a city that has a uh, population of people who are black and brown that's right now 63%. Um, and so, in, you know, in a large city with a demographic like that, when you talk about criminal justice, you're talking about something that at many different levels has affected basically the entire city. And they see that in three dimensions. I think that's why Philadelphians are so excited and interested for reform. 
Well, Larry, congratulations on the series. I applaud you and uh, I believe with your philosophy and uh, just an amazing series. Thank you so much for joining me today and good luck with the show. Thank you, Jeff. Great to see you.